Well, I'm underneath my W24 workhorse. I thought I'd do a video on the forgotten ore change, which that's the differential. And this is a Dana S130. There's the tag over there. You look wondering where your tag is. Up on top is the vent. By the way, when you go to fill your oil back up, it's a lot easier to unscrew the vent, stick your funnel there, and pour the oil into it than it is trying to do it from the side. Um, one thing I want you to do is change oil when it's hot. So I just come in off a, a long trip. What we got here? So 173 degrees. So she's good and warm. Been driving about four and a half hours on our last leg here. And of course to, to get your fill plug out on the side, all you need is a half hitch ratchet and extension. Get right in there. Give it a few turns. Of course, I already cracked it loose. Now, the drain is this bolt right here. It's your drain bolt. And it is a, what did I say it was, 13 sixteenths. Yeah, that's what it is, 13 sixteenths. So, let's get that rolling. It is kind of dark under here. Let's see what this oil looks like. The last time I checked it, I, uh, uh, while I was on the road, I noticed I had a little flake of metal. That made me nervous. So I'm going to drain it again and see what I get out of it. And uh, hopefully I don't have any more metal. If I do, I'll be pulling the pumpkin out of this thing. I'll go from there. I hope not, but I may have to. All right, this thing's being up. Well, it's never easy doing this stuff one-handed. here. It's going pretty hot. The bolt was quite long too. All right. Any day now. Right. Fill plug loose. Take that out. Oh, hot bolt. Alright. There she's pouring out. Take the magnet loose from the side. Golly, that thing is hot. Yeah, that oil there. I don't know. I'm trying to think how many miles it's got on it. It may have 3,000 miles or so on it. Um, I just changed it when I saw some metal in it. So I'm changing it again. I'm going to pull this fill plug out see if there's any metal on it. Okay, well I crawled up from under it and looks pretty good. Everything looks just a little bit of fuzz on it. So that's good to see. I was a little concerned when I changed, I'm still torn about what to do. When I um, checked it, I don't know, 3,000 miles ago or so, I had this little flake of metal there on my magnet. And that's more, that's, um, that's a pretty good chunk right there. And a couple of other pieces. And I do not know where it's come from. And there is no more. So I was debating about whether to drop the pumpkin and inspect it or leave it be. And I just don't know. So I got to decide if I'm going to drop the pumpkin or leave it alone. That I do not know what to do yet. So anyway, so, and I guess they recommend going back with a synthetic. And also the, the time intervals. People, you don't change these things near enough, evidently. I called Dana and they said, uh, like in a motorhome use, I think if you use conventional oil, it's every 12 months. If you use synthetic, every three years. And I don't think it's not so much mileage, but you got to think about how much uh, sweating goes on inside of a differential and the contamination of the oil over time. We, it just sits so much and the, the temperature changes and uh, it's probably constantly getting moisture in, in, in the differential and diluting the oil out over time. So that's why I call that, you know, the differential is the forgotten oil change. People just go and go and never think about it till it's too late. And if it goes out, it's going to cost you dearly. 
that's what I'm trying to avoid. And so I got that little flaker metal I gotta decide what I'm gonna do. So something else I've done, this is a brand new uh, container, never had nothing in it, so I, I, I put all the oil in this. I'm gonna let it sit overnight, so if there's any metal particles, I'll let it soak, uh, fall to the bottom. And I'll pour it out tomorrow and see if I see any debris in it whatsoever. I mean, to look on the surface, it looks pretty, pretty good, pretty clean. So we'll find out tomorrow. Well, I'm down here in my garage, finishing up my little differential uh, change and update a little bit. What I'm going to do, because I've always had a little bit of oil residue coming off the axle tube where this vent is located. So I'm going to relocate it a little bit higher up in the frame. Because it was a simple enough project. Just got a, a coupler here and, and a fitting that screws in there and some 3 8 rubber hose. And of course I got a, another one on the other end. So I'll, I'll screw this into, into the differential itself. Then I'll mount this up in the frame rail. And you can see what I've done here. I've ground me two flat spots. And I'm going to clamp that with the hose clamp to this metal bracket. And then bolt this up in a frame rail. And that should be nice and sturdy. Up a little bit higher. Uh, shouldn't, it'll still breathe fine. And should prevent any more oil residue from getting it out on the axle tube. So that's my plan of attack. Let's see how it turns out. Well, this was good timing. I uh, got this magazine in the mail today and opened it up. And lo and behold, I had an article in here on Spartan chassis. So I was reading through that, and they particularly point out the fact that the rear differential fluid is often ignored, but it should be changed annually. So just think about that. How many, I bet you 90% of the RVs going down the road today do not get their differential oil changed every year. I'd be certain of that. So anyway, especially with what Spartan says, if you want Spartan chassis, they're telling you to change that oil every year. So, something to think about. I'm sure there's a good reason for it. Alright, I'm fixing to crawl under here. I've got my oil. I bought this. This is O'Reilly 75140 full synthetic gear lube. And I was going to point out, there is a difference. I noticed, we was out in California, and this is when I found that flake of metal that you saw in that video earlier. Uh... I found that out in California because a friend of mine, his RV, his differential went completely out at 90,000 miles. It was on diesel pusher. He changed his oil at uh, 50,000. I guess figured would change it again at 100, but before he hit the 100,000 mile point, the carrier bearing failed and destroyed it. Very expensive repair. Was down for two weeks out in California getting that done. So while we was waiting on his to get repaired, I was thinking about my differential, so that's when I pulled my pl uh, drain plug out and, and, and was going to change it and then I noticed that flake of metal so I had me concerned I thought I was going to have to get home and and pull the pumpkin out and, and inspect it but I drove uh, about 2200 miles home from California back to Kentucky and there's no more metal so that's a good sign but then I was trying to determine for sure okay what's the best way to take care of this thing to get good long life out of it so I called Dana I got some information off the web um, so I called the trophy number, talked to their text. Actually, I had different questions and over a week or so. I called, talked, uh, called three different times, talked to three different texts. And of course, every time you get someone a different tech, you get a different opinion. One tech told me if it was his, he would change it, uh, the, even the synthetic. Because they say this is considered vocational use, where if it's an RV, it sits so much, we only use it during the summertime. Um, so that's why I chose 75140 for, for summertime use. But um, the, the fact that it does sit all, all the time, it's not used on a daily basis, it, moisture, I guess, is our enemy. With those, that big empty metal container that holds the differential is always sweating due to temperature changes and that moisture builds up into the oil over time. Uh, so, you know, one way to get that out of, and I, don't, I guess it doesn't get hot enough either. You think about a car engine, it gets up over 200 degrees. If there's moisture, it's gonna vaporize and get rid of it. Differential, mine, I noticed, when I'm running synthetic, it gets about 149 degrees on synthetic. Now, on the way back home, I just put regular gear lube in it, the, the, the standard mineral oil. And with it, I was running like 165 degrees or better. 
So I, I did notice the temperature difference between synthetic and regular oil. So that's why I'm going, going to go back with synthetic. Um, but one thing he mentioned to me uh, that might be a good thing to do is like after a year, uh, just drain a little bit of it out and do what they call a crackle test. I never heard of this. But a crackle test is where you have a hot plate, you set it at 400 degrees, and you put a little bit of oil on there and you listen for it to, for, if it crackles and pops like you're frying bacon, there is moisture in the oil. So that was something I never heard of, but on YouTube you'll see plenty of vid videos. Just, just Google uh, a crack, crackle oil test and you'll see what that's all about. So my plan is to put this synthetic oil in there and I'll you know, drive it for a year or so and then probably drain it again. I'll, I'll get me see these I'll get me another one of these new containers that's nice and clean, 12 quart container from Walmart. Pour it in there, catch it, and I'll look and see if there's any metal whatsoever. Of course, this is what I drained out before. And I noticed see there's, there's no metal content. Uh, so it looked really good. So that kind of gives me some confidence. I was kind of worried about my differential where I saw that one little flake of metal. But I don't, uh, and I talked to the people at Dana, they said they wouldn't worry about it, just that one piece. Just keep driving it and just keep an eye on it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come on here and get this filled up and uh, we'll see how that goes. So I'm under the RV. I was going to show you this little tip. It makes it a whole lot easier than trying to squirt the oil in here and into the fill hole sideways. It's always a pain. It kind of sneaks up on you and oil starts running everywhere. Just take the vent loose from the top and fill it from above. You can uh, Take you a razor blade and cut right about this line where you got a nice big hole. And then all you gotta do is give it a few squeezes and you can quickly yeah, pump it pump it in there. So that make quick work of getting the oil in there. Yeah. There we go. So there's one down and about six or seven more to go. Okay is done and uh, I got her all filled up now and actually it took exactly six quarts just as got emptying the sixth quart some oil started coming out here but for some reason according to my notes it, it took seven quarts last time but maybe I was at a little bit different angle or something in the driveway could have made a difference uh, but I relocated my vent you see there's my three eighths hose comes up and around let me change here Try to get back here a little bit further. I'll go back this way with the camera. There we go. Get behind the drive shaft. So there's the vent. I've relocated up here. It's got room to wiggle. I just put my little bracket right here, right off the extra bracket that where the brake line goes. So that worked out pretty well. Got me enough slack here. So um, as, the, as the differential moves up and down with the springs, it'll have no problems. So I guess this project is complete. Um, well, when I'm under here, I just thought of something. Look at these. Just to, to put in your arsenal of tools, I forget what size this is, but it's 12, 12 point. If your RV ever breaks down on you and you have to be towed, you want to make sure you have a wrench or a socket that fits this so you can uh, undo your drive shaft and, uh, and tow it. You know, because you never know if the wrecker is going to have all the tools needed. Uh, hopefully that day never comes, but that's something you should have with you. Because I've also heard where you, they may recommend pulling the axles. That's another option too, but I don't know how often that gets done. You would think most, but maybe most of them they just pull the drive shaft. I don't know, but something to think about. Anyway, I guess this job is done. I'll clean up my tools and get on to the next project.